yeah so let's start uh today's session will be focusing on project project budget planning so we will just try to see the main the main objectives from all uh, i think like you're able to see my my screen right okay so let me make the slides uh, like if you have any question uh like uh, don't like uh, unmute your microphone and talk since i'm not seeing uh, if you raise your hand or uh, so like let's start with the session and it will be mainly focusing on project budget planning i think you are for you can't see my screen right can someone say yes 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 uh, yes okay so let's continue uh so when we came to project budgeting uh budgeting it's a process of estimating the financial resources that are required to complete the project within like the given period of time or like within the specific time frame so the the main importance of having a project budgets will be uh, the first one is a well to have a well structured budget that will which will help us to ensure that resources are allocated effectively and also it will help us to track uh, what our what are our costs and uh, to avoid overspending if we don't know like how much we are spending on our project it will it might have an uh, extravagant uh, cost so like it will help us to avoid overspending and the third one will be it will help us to ensure that the project can be completed within the financial constraints that we provide uh, or like of the train of the tender so since we are uh, we are seeing this to have to apply the tender application so <clears throat> the second one the key components of uh, budgets is the first one is personal costs and the second one is equipment and technology the third one is materials the fourth one is overheads and the last one is contingency reserve these are the key components of project budgets we will define each uh, one by one and that's the first one is personal costs uh, which which is mainly focused on salaries and wages for for all the team members for example we can we might have software engineers in our team or project managers support staff or other like persons with different professions so for as an example if you have five software engineers and if you are going to pay them a thousand dollar within a month for a month if like for six months we are going to pay them just two to two two hundred forty thousand so we will just have we we need to know how much we are costing so the personal costings it's just mainly concerned with salaries and wage so we the whole of the whole idea is we need to know our costs and personal cost is it's mainly concerned with salaries and wages so this is just an example so the second one is equipment and technology so when we are talking about equipment and technology it is a cost which which is mainly focusing on hardware software and cloud services or different technologies that we are going to use for our project execution so as an example we can consider uh, like we might have a laptop that we are going to use for the project so if you are going to spend one 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 thousand one hundred one thousand five hundred dollar for each we are going to have nine thousand dollar for six laptops so we need to know overall our costs and if you are going to see like material costs it will be concerned uh, it will be included in the equipment and technology part so like the next one is materials cost if uh, when we are saying materials cost it will be a uh, physical supply such as office materials it might be chair or a table or a lot of uh, it might also be a desktops a lot of ac uh, access uh, accessories that we are going to use for our offices documentation or equipment required for the project so for example um 
office supplies for six months it might be like uh, we can it might be uh, we can have a cost of two thousand dollar for six months this this is just a uh, we it might like it might we might have a cost of two thousand dollar for six months which which is which is used to office supplies so the next one is overheads uh, in overheads we have indirect costs like office rent utilities and administrative uh, administrative fees uh, so like office rent if we rent our office that is office rent and the utilities electricity and other utilities like Wi-Fi or other utilities and uh, administrative fees. So for, as an example, if we rent an office, $2,000 per month for six months, we are going to have a budget. We need to have a budget of $12,000. So we need to, we need to like overall seeing uh, each cost is for our project during, that are going to help us during our project execution it will help us how much uh, how much cost or how much we need to be we need to provide financially so the next one is contingency reserve it is a buffer to cover unexpected or unforeseen expect, uh, expenses or risks so for example 10% uh, of our total budgets would well, we can say we can set aside that ten percent for contingencies. For example, if we have like uh, two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar total budget, we can aside twenty five thousand dollar for the uh, contingencies. So this is just according. To, uh, it might be it might differ according to the projects that we are working on and uh, according to the companies. Uh, the like. The person that was the, the individual that's responsible for the budgets, uh, so like it might differ according to the a lot of situations. But for this, we can consider this as an example. Uh, this is just a sample uh, for the, on how to break down our budget. So. <clears throat> And the components we have personal equipment materials overheads and contingency reserve uh, we have a description for the personnel we have like salaries for engineers and managers so we will just list out the, the descriptions equipment we have laptops and software licenses and on materials we have office supplies uh, and these are like the last one also shows us the cost in dollar so this is just a sample breakdown so uh, you can you can make it detailed or you can make it less detailed according to what you want so the next one is uh, that the steps that we, we need to take a while uh, while creating the budgets or uh, for our project so like before going there do we have any question Till now, we have seen the key components and uh, we have also uh, seen the an example for each of the components. So do we have any questions so far? Do we have any question? Like, are you guys okay with till now? Okay, so let me continue. Okay, so like uh, on the steps to create a budget for our project, the first one is identifying cost components, and then the second one is estimating costs. So like after we identified those components, we are going to estimate costs for each component, and then the next one is to create a tabular budget so that it will be create uh, clear for anyone that's going to see the the provided tabular budget and then the last one will be adjusting for risks or its contingencies so like uh, the first one identifying cost components we we are going to first list all the resources that are required for our projects which will include personal equipment overhead costs materials and all that uh, the components that we have seen before all like it might also include others and then after that, uh, let's see an example. So for the personnel, we might we might need to have five software engineers and one project manager for our project. So like we need to list out those required 
those required personnel for our project and then the second one is equipment we need to we are maybe like we need to have laptops and cloud storage for uh, in order to make the project execution successful so we also need to list out that and all over the of like coming to the overheads we need to have over office rent or utilities so like we need to list out the point is like we will just identify our cost components and we, we will list all the required uh, resources for our projects and then the next one is we are going to estimate the costs so while estimating the costs using historical data and market rates it will help us to determine the costs for each uh, listed components uh, do, like in bef in the previous step and then like using ai tools it it will it will also help us to improve the accuracy of these estimates for example market rate for a software engineer we know that it might like it might cost us five dollar per hour so uh, considering this we will just list for example if you are going uh, in in the men's we have 160 hours so like uh, like multiplying it with the market rate we are going to f we are going to have eight uh, eight thousand dollar for the monthly pay for the for one software engineer so like we need to prepare our finance according to what we are going to get during our estimation so we like we need we <clears throat> We at least need to try to provide those finances so that we can have a smooth project execution so like the next one will be after having an estimated cost for each or required components we will create a tabular budget so like we while creating a tabular budget we will organize all the identified components into like a clear format and then we will show what like the costs for each uh, identified component so like for example for software engineers we are we need quantity of five and then the estimated uh, cost will be eight thousand dollar per month and then the total cost will be uh, the identified uh, the estimated cost times quantity which is around forty thousand dollar so for project manager we have we need one quantity and uh, like we also need to estimate the cost, which is ten thousand dollar per month, and then we will have a total cost of ten thousand. This is just a sample. Uh, this whole thing, the estimation cost, uh, the, these are all just a sample. So the next one, if if we also need a cloud storage for our project, and if we are going to use it for twelve months, and if we are going, if it's going to cost us. Two hundred dollar per month. We we need to expect a cost, a total cost of uh, two thousand forty dollar overall, like for the cloud storage. And so, like after first identifying the key components that we are we, that are required for our project, and then uh, like after st after estimating the costs for each component, we are going to prepare the tabular budgets so that we can have a clear format uh clear format of the project cost and then the next one is we are we are expected to adjust for a risk uh, for a risk we have seen that contingency and reserve it's uh, like it will help us to uh, handle unforeseen or unexpected expenses during our project execution so like we need to include a, con a contingency reserve so like it might be more of like i think it's ar around 10 to 15 uh, percent of the total budget that's going to be uh, that's going to be put as for the contingency so like we are going to put 10 percent of the total budget for the for contingency um i like yeah this is all about how we are going to create a budget and then the next one will be like how we are going to use AI tools while we are planning our budget. So 
AI tools, it can improve accuracy and efficiency in budget creation so that it will also help us to analyze historical data and it will also help us to predict future trends. So uh, the first one is uh, financial forecasting. So like AI, can, it can help us to predict cost increases such as inflation or labor market changes and it will it, will, it can also adjust our budget accordingly. So like, for example, if uh, if AI forecasts that equipment prices will rise by 5% over the project period, the, or the, if the, and if our original cost was five, like $50,000 uh, for equipment, it will be adjusted into uh, like $52,500 because like, since we have already seen that there will be a rise of five uh, percent over the project duration, so uh, generally it will help us to forecast according to the expected rise. And then the next one is it will also help us uh, help us AI driven simulation. It will help us to simulate different project scenarios to see how changes will affect the budgets. So, like, if, uh, for example, if a project extends by two months, it means that we need to have, we, we will have another expenses for another two months. So, uh, AI, it will help us to calculate that personal cost is, uh, how much our, uh, how much our project cost is will increase. Uh, it might be like 50% or 20%. So, like, it will just help us to analyze those uh, inflation scenarios. So, like, uh, it will just be a summary and uh, preparing our project uh, budgeting. It is so essential for our project's success during the that in their application. And if we uh, integrate AI while we are like planning our budget, it will help us improve financial forecasting and budget accuracy. So, like. We have seen that AI will study the historical data and help us to predict the future. Uh, and also, like having having a good project uh, budgeting, it will help us to have effective resource management, uh, which is a well-planned uh, budget ensures resources are used efficiently. So, like having uh, a well-structured project project budgeting, it will help us ensure that our resources are not over spending and uh, lots of different issues so like we need to have uh, we need to make sure that we have a good budget uh, project budgeting so like this is all about today's session if you have any question you can raise it seems like you guys are so eager to eat your lunch so you are not talking also. Yeah, Tarafa, you can continue. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's a nice presentation. It's short and precise, uh, but I have only one uh, uh, question. Uh, just to be clear, under the estimation part, you said that is a market rate. Do you mean the market rate like the market assessment before we allocate the budget for all the materials or for all utilities? We need to uh first conduct the market assessment i think so do you mean that market rate is the same as market assessment thank you yeah so like uh i by the means of market rate i mean i i mean market assessment because like when we are when we are uh, when we are expected to estimate a cost we need to first to know uh like how much that thing is costing on the market uh on the market space that's like market rate it means market assessment so like we need to have we need to understand the market before doing any estimation uh, i did that answer your question Rafa? okay so yeah. like thank you okay okay we have another question um yes i do uh, okay. this one is regarding the the um challenge um, it says that after doing the whole budget and focusing, we need to transfer it into the given template. 
and um, I opened the template. It's uh, I, I don't understand exactly where I'll put what figure. Maybe if we could just look at the templates and you can sort of like give us direction. Okay, so like, <clears throat> I think this is a template, right? It's a price schedule. So uh, uh, I think, yes. So in here we have fees and other costs related to contract. So uh, you will just put accordingly. So this is travel expenses and these are the fees and other costs related to the contract so like if you have if you have any fees or if you have any cost related to the contract you will just put it over here uh, uh th this is like where you are going to put the item uh and then the name over here yeah so and then you will just number of expert for example like we have uh, one key expert for the contracts, so like the number of ex expert days, this is 70 days that the, the expert is going to work. And then the cost also will be listed over here so that we will have all the costs. And then, yeah, I think like um, for the travel expenses, this is international flights. Uh, you will just put its budget or price and then the whole over here yeah i think like uh it's you can customize it with the way you want maybe like i i was preparing some so like you can't customize you can enter this uh, this budget that you have prepared into this one so like you will include your items over here uh, travel expense you can yeah you can create your own so if you don't have any travel expense you can create your own or like if you don't have any cost related to contract you can and if you have another another expenses you will just create your own and this the you will just consider the item mm -hmm. the item so like and then if you ha i i don't think i don't i i don't know like if we have some items over here but type of re reimbursement this is just for the travels and then number number like it's a quantity so international flights we have four for this and then you will list the budget and then you will calculate the total based on the budget and then the number so like if you are if you don't have that much of travel expenses and if you are other maybe like using other costs it will help us like mm, or you can say you can say some expense like the travel expense or you can just add all the all the other costs over here and you can use the same the same way as this one okay so we can change the type of items so if I don't have international flights and I have um, something else, I can customize it and delete international flights and enter something else. Yes, yes, sure. Okay. Yes, like you are just expected to use this format. Like you need to list if you have fees and other costs for your contracts or uh, travel expenses and if you don't have those you can just simply use uh you can just simply list what you have okay and it has to be for all um the experts like um i know the assignment says we should have four four experts yeah. i'm gonna multiply by four it's gonna be one sheet for everyone yes yes okay. Okay. I think you. like, but we have four experts, but with different profession. Yeah. 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 So like, I think uh, you will have one expert over here and you will add one column and uh, one row. And then, uh, yeah, you will have. And then you I will add for second expert. Yeah. Yeah. I think oh, like okay. you will do it like this because, uh, since they their expertise is different you will have yeah. a different cost for each okay 
Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. you. Okay, okay, sure blessing. Do we have another question? Okay, Tarafa, you can go on. Yeah, thank you. We maybe one more question. Uh, when we uh, allocate the budget, uh, are we considering the market rate or the financial forecast when we are just allocating the budget? Which one we need to be starting point? Okay, so I think like you need to first you need to focus on the market the market assessment because like you can't guess you or you can't predict from which uh, from which uh, starting cost to which one you are going to invest on that uh, specific scenario so like you need to have uh, the and you need to understand the market before doing any estimation Okay, so do we have another question? Pauline, Bernard, Kevin, Ruye, do we have a question? Okay, so like if you all get to understand the Point. I think we will wrap up the session and I think we will we need to have some reactions and enjoy your lunch everyone. <laughs>